All right, welcome to today's course. We are going to be discussing the real estate contracts. Now, in this class, we're going to talk a little bit about contracts in general and some of the real estate contracts. So make sure when you're taking the exam, you actually read the entire question because there could be a slightly different answer when dealing with contracts as a general concept or a real estate contract. And remember, real estate contracts work under the statute of frauds, meaning it must be in writing. Whereas there are legal contracts that could be oral, but not in real estate. So make sure you understand the question, is it asking about a contract or is it asking about a real estate contract? Because the answer could be slightly different, all right? Uh, we're going to talk about the different types and styles of contracts. We're going to talk about the requirements that are required to be a contract and uh, what happens if it's not a contract. All right. So let's get started with today's course. All right. So when it comes to contracts, the first thing I want to do is literally explain the requirements for a contract. Okay. Okay. So if you look right there on the page, you can see a contract is a voluntary agreement or promise between legally competent parties that are supported by some legal consideration to perform or not perform some legal act. All right. So I want to go through this. It is a voluntary agreement. You cannot force someone into a contract. You know, you've seen all those old gangster movies where they take them in the back room and break their knees or something. You can't do that. It's a voluntary agreement. It must be entered into both parties under their own volition. Between legally competent parties must be of sufficient mental capacity to understand the contract and must be of legal age. Most, if not all, states are 18. It must be supported by some legal consideration. Now, remember in the deed, we talked about that generic term of $10 or other good and valuable services. And I told you that that term is in every contract because it has to be because one of the requirements is consideration. So even if you give property away, which you are allowed to, it still has some nominal value and it must to fulfill this section. It's to perform some legal act. You cannot have a contract that performs an illegal act. All right. That is called the dirty hands theory or that something very similar to that. You, so the transfer or the conveyance is the word that we've been using of real property is a legal act. So a contract must fit that definition and it must have all of those parts for it to be a valid contract. Okay. Now that contract can actually come in two styles. The first style is what they call an express contract. An express contract can be legal or can be legal, <laughs> better be legal. An express contract can be written or it can be oral, all right? And in an express contract, it is where both parties know and understand their portion of the contract. So if I said to you, I will wash your car today for $20. Do you agree? And you say, yes, that is an express contract. Now that one's oral because we did it in a spoken fashion, but we both understand that I am going to wash the car and you are going to pay me $20. That makes it so that both of us know what we're doing. We both know our actions that are involved. That would be an express contract. Now, an implied contract 
is where the parties may think they know or are not expressly told to do it. And you just do it by the demonstration of your actions. Now, this should sound a little familiar. This it would be kind of like implied agency. Remember, where implied agency is based upon the actions of the party. The same thing holds true here. So, if you get done listening to this class and you decide you want to go to lunch, so you go out to your favorite uh, Mexican restaurant and you have lunch. But before you leave, what will you do before you leave? Think about that. So you go in, you have lunch, and before you leave, what do you do? You pay, right? Why? Is there anything on the wall that says, we'll feed you, you pay us? Did the waiter actually hand you a contract that says, we'll perform these services by feeding you lunch and then you will compensate us? No, it's an implied situation where you know your portion of the contract and it gets completed by the demonstration of your act uh, actions. You actually knew you were supposed to pay so you paid and then walked out. That is the completion of the contract. They performed a voluntary agreement. You both walked in by legally competent people, supported by consideration, that's the pay. And the act is they fed you and you paid them. All right. So an implied contract is born out of the actions of one party or the other. Now, remember, we have touched on this, and I'm telling you, please listen to me. This term right here, the statute of frauds, they love using this term in a test, either as part of the question or as potentially one of the answers, because they realize that most of you forget what that means. So if you're making flashcards, you better make this an important one because they use it two or three different places, all right? And just to refresh your memory, the statute of frauds requires some contracts to be written to be defendable in a court of law. Real estate contracts are such. They must be in writing to be defendable in a court of law. There is no such thing as an oral listing agreement. There is no such thing as an oral purchase agreement. And you laugh at that, but I'm going to tell you, you get this quite often. There has been a, dozens of cases in my career where someone will call and go, hey, you got that house listed? Tell the seller I'll give them 100 grand and see what they say. Sorry, that's not in writing. I don't really have to obey that command because under the statute of frauds. Now, you want to write that down and send it to me, then I will present it to my seller, but it must be in writing, all right? So a contract that has the style of express or implied could also be bilateral or unilateral. A bilateral contract is where both parties must act. Both parties must act that will contract them to be enforceable. All of the real estate contracts we use are bilateral, meaning both parties must do something. And if you remember back to one of the ways that will terminate agency. I told you it was a mutual release. Mutual means both parties agree because we work under bilateral contracts. The buyer has to provide money. The seller provides the deed to the property. Both parties must act. All real estate contracts work under bilateral. Got that? Except one. There is one unilateral contract, and we'll touch on it. So memorize what I just said, that all contracts in real estate are bilateral, except for one.
and we'll get to it here in a minute. A unilateral contract is where one party has to act, but the other party doesn't necessarily need to act. All right. There's a couple really good examples here. And maybe for some of us older people, we might remember layaway. Do you guys know what layaway is? If you don't know what layaway is, layaway used to be a method of buying something at a department store where you could go in and say, hey, here, hold this T-shirt. I will come back tomorrow and pay for it. And you had to give some little nominal value to hold that. Why would you have to give some nominal value? Because there has to be legal consideration. So you would say, hey, look, hold this T-shirt in layaway. Here's $5. I will come back tomorrow and buy this shirt from you. All right. Now, does that person ever have to go back and buy the shirt? The answer is no, they don't. All right. They do not ever. They could just walk away and never go back. Yes, they lose that $5, but they never have to finish the purchase. They could just say, no, change my mind. But should they do decide to finish the purchase, the department store must sell it to them. They must act. All right. So unilateral, one party, meaning the buyer never has to go back. But if they do, the seller must fulfill their obligation of the contract and, in this example, sell the shirt. That is a unilateral contract. All right. Now, that contract has different stages of life. So let's go over here and look at this. <clears throat> a, one of the stage is right here. This is where you form the contract. I will wash your car today for $20, yes or no. And you say yes. That contract has been formed, all right? Now, there is a time frame in which it takes me to actually, let's do this. There is a time frame that it's going to take me to actually wash your car. During that time frame, that contract is said to be in executory status, all right? It is in executory status right here. That is the time frame in which one party or the other is performing their activity so that it can be completed. If you list a house... They sign the listing agreement. You now go put it on the MLS and you show the property, but you're waiting for an offer. So that whole time frame that you are, quote unquote, working on that listing, it has executory status. Once that contract has been fully formed or fully completed, it is said to be executed. It is completed. So it is completed right here. You form it, it becomes an executory status, and then once you're done, it is executed. All right. Now, do not confuse this executed status with a verb that the attorneys love to use to make them sound great is when they say to execute. We want you to execute this contract. That means to sign it. All right. So this is a verb here. So you'll hear attorneys say, hey, I need to come in the office today and execute this contract. That means to sign. Do not confuse that with the status of executed, meaning complete. OK, so another good example is when a buyer offers to a seller and the seller accepts the purchase agreement, that purchase agreement has been formed and the clock starts right here. 
while all that process is going on, they're having the home inspection, they're doing the appraisal, they're getting the financing. That purchase agreement is an executory contract, I meaning it's being worked on. And then it closes and everybody's hunky dory. That purchase agreement has now been executed. All right. So those are the different life frames of it. The, of the contract. So hopefully in your career, you will deal with nothing but valid contracts. And how that contract gets formed is a process. And remember we said it must have mutual agreement. So let's look at something here. 